there's a real asset class. There's Correct. something real, Correct. tangible. Mm-hmm. People Correct. want this. Correct. You know, Correct. crypto, it's interesting. It has a bunch of potential in different areas. And of course, like the blockchain is a whole other thing that has been developed around the cryptocurrency that has also amazing potential. But, you know, it's, it's different. It's not like, it's not a speculative move. You know, maybe it catches on. Correct. It's a $168 billion market today. We know that, right? Like, in the world. Like, this is something. It, it exists. It helps people. People want it and will continue to want it and want it more. Right. You know? Very true. It, well, so that's the one thing. Like, I, I do I, get it. I it's, even wonder, though, how um, crypto as a... I, w- I hesitate to call it a currency. Okay. Um, it is. It is. First but I, I have hesitate though because you anyway. can actually access it right now well my, my thought is is do you foresee since you're into into trading do you foresee the crypto space interweaving in some way to provide financial services yeah no to yeah thanks okay very cool yeah i mean it's it's yeah it's something you can't stop because uh, you know when people say crypto i mean don't think bitcoin i don't know what ha- what will or won't happen with bitcoin but i'm like some form of crypto will be very likely, you know, linger and, 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 and become very viable and, and widely used. Um, because, I mean, central banks in many countries have issues, you know, and, 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 and you know, many times currencies are used to, to manipulate other uh, facets of the economy. And sometimes it's very useful, though, like, being able to do a monetary policy can help you prevent or stop or reduce the impact of a crisis, right? Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's certainly something there. You know, crypto will n- not just be for these like secret transactions and you know illegal things. There's a lot of people who don't like this, and also a lot of communities who are left out of that system. So there's certain places and. South America, for instance, uh, that are adopting what is called social currencies. Yeah, it's a form of crypto, or yep. you know, or actually, you know, blockchain-based currency. It, uh, you know, it doesn't have value outside of this community. But imagine all this office. We are like a hundred people. All this office, like we said, well, we don't have any money, but like you have chickens, and I have milk. Like, how many chickens equate to milk? Right. We don't know, and, and I don't necessarily want milk. So we have this system where we trade and assign a certain value, and this currency has value within our, you know, our community. Right, right. And the, I, I, the reason why I bring that connection up is because the, the way that we are creating this documentary was very much inspired by cryptocurrency communities. Yeah. Um, in fact, you mentioned uh, cryptocurrency helping South American companies with other countries. One uh, cryptocurrency was called uh, Patcoin, and that one was, um, at least in the news uh, as of the last six months or so, supposed to be implemented in Venezuela as a replacement. Um, who knows where that's at right now? But that's at least for practicity, right? Like for, for use, like uh, um, is this country, Northern Africa, Libya? Uh, no. Uh, uh, the uh, uh, Somal- Somalia. 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 Yeah. yeah. So Somalia. The, the, the certain regions of Somalia, where the government, uh, you know, has more or less control, and and they again, like they had this massive devaluation of the currency. So like for one banana, you had to spend like a box full of cash. So they right. just replaced it. It was like, but it was like electronic payments. Right. Yeah. And and. Well, specifically with this pack coin, they were uh, set up so that the community would vote on what pack coin gets involved in. And so I said, oh, you know what, that, that may be a good idea for a documentary, <laughs> and especially in the marijuana industry. You know, we'll allow them to pick topics, allow them to pick the music, allow them to you know, pick the style of font that we choose. Which celebrities we interview. Yeah, which celebrities which we go to first. Really right? Yeah, all of that. So the, the whole point is to make sure that the community is having a say and they can kind of gauge where we're going in the direction of the documentary. No matter what we know, there are certain cities that we definitely have to go to. You know, yeah. For instance, we talked a little bit about Toronto. Yeah. Definitely. On yeah. the list. But 
how are we getting there? You know, like, are we just going to fly right in? Are we yeah. going to be able to drive a bus? Are we going to be like, how are we going to be able to provide the full documentary experience so that the community has a say in what we do? Should we be stopping in other cities along the way? Should we go to London? Should we go to... And like releasing you know, ourselves from that creative um, control is where it's like very unique yeah. in that regard. Because like, you know, it's a little bit scary in some, in some At ways. one point, they're going to tell us what to do. Yeah, at some point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, there's there's a uh, definitely a middle ground for sure, right? Yeah. Between you know, compromise. Yes, very much. Halfway happy. Right. Is that the definition? <laughs> yeah, it is basically. Yep. <laughs> yep. Like, if this gets made, like it's worth it. Yeah, and the, and then plus you, you don't compromise ethics, but you like you like. Hundred percent. Exactly. And and I feel like as well, like the, the community can allow to bridge the gap of where we fall short, fall short. Yeah. you know like yeah. even us right here we could talk all day we could talk all week right but we'll always be missing some topics yeah. that somebody listening to us is like well why did you guys talk about this yeah. you know yeah, like, yeah. well we no, want I mean, to give if, if you ask me like i think you should go to columbia yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I should i think we should go to columbia i'll show you some pictures it's mind-blowing like outdoor oh, grows, outdoor like grows. 10, 10 000 plants like yeah. but extremely high quality right what are some of the best places that you've gone to that really speaks to you on a, on a, on a, on a cultural cannabis level? Uh, so Columbia, yeah, so Toronto. in terms of cannabis culture, in terms of cultivation, because in terms of culture, you know, there's a very strong Let's culture, for instance, in Uruguay. Okay. That's why they were the first country to legalize recreational cannabis, but to use cannabis. Uh, also, because it's a, very, it's a very small country, and they had a very progressive president who didn't want people to go to jail, etc. But there's a huge cannabis culture, right? Like, old ladies know about what cannabis does, right? And consumption is socially acceptable, right? Similar as the case in, in, in Toronto, for instance, to a certain extent in Detroit. You know, there are Colorado and California and, uh, you know, the Netherlands here. You know, they're cannabis positive. That's our CEO. Um, but yeah, I mean, those are the ones. And in terms of cultivation, very interesting trends. Yeah, in, in Colombia right now, and I would definitely just keep it on an emerging markets in general. Um, it's not like we will stop seeing cannabis being grown in Michigan or Canada. Like, you know, it'll be like specific craft kind of cannabis. You don't see people growing a bunch of bananas and mangoes in warehouses here. Right. It's, it's you know, it's, um, it's a little bit counterintuitive and not very eco-friendly. Some specific, like if, like for people who love high quality buds, probably I yeah, will still get them from here, but like all this evolution in products like medical oils and extracts and blah 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 and active pharmaceutical ingredients you know 99 percent pure cbd crystals will be likely very likely and i'm not saying wonderful sure but you can't tell the future but like likely produce somewhere else just like doesn't make sense you know if you can produce a ground and flower in columbia for seven ten even like 50 cents a gram in canada is two three four well you know there's that, right. and you know, when you need medication, they don't really care, like, if like the flower is cracked, there's some medical products that need to be as affordable as possible, because not everyone can afford the luxury of 30% THC buds. Right. It's interesting to hear you say the word craft, and, and it parallels with the idea of beer. Yeah, well, it's the same thing. Yeah, very much, yeah. I mean, it's the, exactly. I mean, probably the Budweiser of cannabis will be produced in yeah. some other emerging market, and the uh, like higher quality 